Hello, I'm Charlie Brooker, and you're watching Newswipe, a programme all about what the bloody hell's been going on, such as this. Unemployment now so huge it has to be depicted by plummeting monolithic numbers. World's most evil man can't even be bothered to stop reading his blue book during trial of the century. <laughs> Crazy Pope. <laughs> but first... Viewed from a distance, our world, planet Earth, looks like a serene, slowly revolving orb, or a novelty beach ball. But it's not. It's actually a complex and bewildering hive of activity filled with people and objects and resources and institutions and belief systems and sugar babes and field mice and godless buses and lord knows what. It's chaos, essentially, and we're all stuck right down here in the middle of it. And who amongst us truly understands what's really going on? To have some idea of how things work, you're supposed to have been watching the news every day of your bloody life. Although the chances are you haven't, at least not really. I mean, when were you meant to start? When you're a kid, the news is effectively out of bounds. It's a programme aimed at adults that's either impenetrably boring... The economy minister for the economy today said interest rates were discombobulating the trade union... ...or outright terrifying murdered horses and terrorists today said that you and your mummy and daddy are certain to die in a global... End result is you ignore the news for years and then suddenly when you're a bit older there comes a point when you realise you've become completely bloody ignorant. So you do something about it, you pick up a paper or switch on the news. But because you've fallen behind it's like tuning into episode 803 of the world's most complex soap opera. And at the same time, the news itself is becoming less of an easily digestible summary of events and more of a grotesque entertainment reality show with heavy emphasis on emotion and sensation and a swaggering, comically theatrical sense of its own importance. The world has changed, and we must change with it. Politicians and newsmakers know this, which is why everything's geared more and more towards sound bites and razzle-dazzle. The soap opera analogy is a fitting one because that's what the news has become. It's showbiz, basically, and as a consequence, the news has become just another rolling TV show whose meaning is lost somewhere among all the babble. Sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's sad, but somehow it isn't real. Well, this show's going to put an end to all of that forever, or at least 29 minutes. The aim is to provide a fun, snarky weekly digest that will help keep you, and hopefully me, on top of the new soap opera. And it starts now. Hello, I'm Charlie Brooker, and you're watching a special compilation episode of Newswipe, which starts with a brisk and, dare I say it, amusing look at how the job of TV news journalists has grown more sophisticated over the years. Early news reports were painstakingly constructed using cumbersome equipment, which meant the resulting films themselves were often quotidian, murky, shoddily framed snooze fests about brown rivers and closing factories. As technology improved, news reports became snazzier, more mobile, more visually playful. Before long, a standard news report visual language established itself, one that's immediately recognisable to anyone. Me has this report. It starts here, with a lacklustre establishing shot of a significant location. Next, a walkie-talkie preamble from the auteur, pacing steadily towards the lens, punctuating every other sentence with a hand gesture and ignoring all the <laughs> milling around him like he's gliding through the <laughs> matrix before coming to a halt and posing a question. What comes next? Often something like this, a filler shot designed to give your eyes something to look at while my voice babbles on about facts. Sometimes it'll slow down to a halt, turn monochrome, and some of those facts will appear one by one on the screen. This is followed by the obligatory shots of overweight people with their faces subtly framed out, after which the report is padded out with a selection of lazy and pointless vox pops. Um, usually get some inane chatter from people. I think they do have too much. I think... What we want to hear is actually what's happening and not what other people think of it. I, I hate these sound, sound bites. That, that, I, I don't want some punter's opinion usually. No. Another bit of dull visual abstraction to plug another gap now before the report segues gracefully into a bit of human interest courtesy of some dowdy man opening letters in a kitchen and explaining how he's been affected by the issue. When I'm watching the news, I don't really... You know, there's a person talking to me, telling me what's going on, and I don't really listen to what they're saying. It's just news. It's just news. He, unfortunately, was boring, so to wake you up, this is an animated chart, this is a silhouette representing the average family, and this is a lighthouse keeper being beheaded by a laser beam. As we near the end of the report, illustrative shots of pedestrians and signs and a pipe at a window. And then the final summary, ending on a whimsical shot of something nearby, accompanied by a wry sign-off. 
if you're lucky, a bit of wordplay fit for a king, or in other words, a regent's treat. Charlie Booker, okay. Newswipe, London. So, you get the point there that there is a formula to watching those, and they all kind of look the same. And as much as I am one that kind of bucks the system and says I hate formulas and you need to be creative, and but I also tell you to think where? Inside, inside, inside the box. Because if there's a formula there, the people who make the formula are also the people who do what? Judge it and produce it and hire you, which is what we want if you want to get in the news. So we're going to go through today talking about how to create your news package. You're going to see why with the documentaries I focused on certain things. So first things first, what is news? Information. Information. Information about the real world? A, a TV segment that never minds. TV segment that never minds. <laughs> what else? I got my five here. What about the rest of you? Why do you not watch the news? Those of you who don't watch the news, yes. Because it's boring. Because right it's boring and doesn't catch, my attention. doesn't catch your attention. Oh, the information doesn't pertain to us. Information doesn't pertain to you. What else? It's never good. It's never good. Okay, sometimes it's positive. But but let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do they promote the positivity as much as they po promote death? No. no. Okay, and why not? Because people are more interested in like people dying or whatever. The phrase is if it bleeds, it leads. Meaning if there is blood, it is going to be the first story. Because that's what people tune in for. And do Television companies really care about your informed? What do they care about? Ratings. 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 Thank you. So news is defined by Wikipedia, because that's a reliable news source, as newly received or noteworthy information specifically about recent or important events. Okay. The grass outside of my classroom is green. Is that news? No. No. What? It's information. Merriam-Webster.com stated that information is knowledge you get about someone or something such as facts or details about a subject. Now, information would be that the grass is green. It could be news, especially if I haven't had green grass in years or months. There was actually a news story on a prominent Atlanta station this weekend about the grass turning green. Because of all that deadly snow we had. <laughs> so, how do you make a great news package? You are going to create essentially what we saw a moment ago. With the lower thirds, with the random things, with the graphics, with all of that, you're going to create that over the next several weeks. How do you create it? First step, find a good story. The grass turning green outside of my room is not a good story. <laughs> under any circumstances. The next thing is it has to be current. The grass turning green outside of my room in the last two weeks, still not a good story. It is balanced because I can tell you that the grass has not been green since December. I will tell you that. Uh, December turned and now we're back to green grass. I'm going to give you both sides of the story. Certain news organizations say that they're fair and balanced or they give you both sides of the story. They Do they really? Nope. They tend to go one direction or the other. And I'll tell you that there are three sides to every story. What are they? Your side, the other side, and the truth. truth. Your side, my side, and the truth. If you get two out of the three, I'll be all right. Okay? That's what they do, like, little interviews for. Yep. You will use pictures, words, and sound. And we'll go next week into how to use sound for driving your story. Um, there's a great piece that I've put together that has some good examples of using sound where you don't even think about it, but then when they take it away, you're like, whoa, something's missing. So we're going to use pictures, words, and sounds. When it comes to news, everything has to be important that's in the story. Okay? Filler. When you guys created the documentaries <laughs> and you realized you were a minute and 24 short, you proceeded to show somebody making beats on their computer for a minute and 30 seconds, or whatever it was. You showed someone playing basketball for 20 seconds longer than they needed to because you needed to fill that to get to that time. 
With news, there is no filler. It's either news or it's not, okay? At no point should you go, all right, I got to have six more seconds. I'm just going to play some music and show somebody growing green grass. Not news. Nobody has time for that. They will turn the channel and you are no longer an effective newscaster. Your story has to be interesting and concise. Sure, I could go into telling you that the grass is green because of chlorophyll and pigments and sun and temperature and all of that. I'll just tell you, the grass out there is green. Done. Okay? Short, interesting, and concise. You will use graphics and animations in your package. The lower third, believe it or not, you can create those in After Effects. You have all the ability to. I'm going to show you how. All right? You're going to create those, make it look good, make it look professional. That's all I care about. We're done doing high school projects. You did those in middle school. Stand-ups. Did you notice that that guy was on camera? Yeah. Do you know who will be on camera in your project? Not us. You will be. <laughs> all of you will be on camera during your news package. Any confusion about that? I don't care how many people are in there, but there's only one that I care about, and that is you. you. Okay. Question. Yes. Who will report them? You will get to that in a bit. Okay, we're a long way away from that. Be conversational. Could you imagine if I came up here to teach you today and I ran down the list? Use words and pictures and sounds to make your news story better. Okay? While I'm probably not the best presenter you've ever seen, I'm more conversational than if I were reading it. You want to be conversational. You want to talk with the viewer, not at, with the viewer. You're going to ask them questions. I do that all the time, right? Yeah. What's news? No matter what, remember, if I ask you a question, what do you do subconsciously? Answer. You answer it. You mentally answer it, even if it's wrong. You're not going to read and recite. You're not going to walk through holding a piece of paper going, and I really like the way that the grass outside of Mr. White's class turns green. Not how it works. You don't have that much script to read, okay? And we'll show you, and I'll show you how much of the script really you're going to have to read. But don't, but like, don't they do that like, when they're behind the news? Yep, the, telecom, the teleprompters and all that. We're not there yet. So you're giving this or making You're doing. Okay. Yeah, you're doing it all. Um, ignore this. Those two, there's no space right there. Sound makes a story come alive, okay? When you are filming something about people playing basketball and you show people playing basketball and there's no shoes squeaking and balls dribbling and people cheering and horns and buzzers and all of that, <laughs> it gets really boring video, okay? So you're going to use sound, and we're going to talk about that later. Now, I'm married to an English teacher, and I'm not telling you that what they've taught you all of your lives is wrong. How many of you have ever taken an English class? And they tell you to use what kind of sentences? Complete, like good sentences, and, and especially when they tell you it's got to be two pages, right? And you want to put in all those words. Well, writing for video is a lot different than writing for some of your other classes or for newspaper. With those things, you're trying to reach a number. You're trying to reach a page. Or with news, you're trying to get a story out on time, quick, and concise. So how is it different? First things first, short, simple sentences. When you are writing and preparing for the news, who are you marketing to? Or let me back up. Are there more smart people or dumb people in the world? Dumb, dumb people. So your job as a news producer is to create what? Smart people. What? No. no. We ain't creating smart. <laughs> you can't, you can't fix can. stupid. No, your job is to do what? Easy to understand. No, back it up. You're creating news. What is your job? What do you care about? Ratings. 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 Exactly. We're trying to get simple sentences so they can understand for the dumb people. Short, simple sentences. Mr. White's grass is green, right? You know Mr. White's grass is green. Now, Mr. White's grass has bloomed into a beautiful synonym for green color. And it is I can't even, like I can't even think smart. Exactly. Because there are several things that go into it, but keep it simple for stupid people. It's kiss. Keep it simple. Okay? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Yes. Easily understandable words. True story. Last semester, I had my second year students write a newscast. And 
one of my favorite students goes through and she edits it the night before to make sure everything is perfect because she's that girl. And I love that. I love her for that. But she added a word that was in a different language <laughs> that she knew that most of us probably know, but the person reading the news didn't know. That word was je ne sais quoi. Anyone know what je ne sais quoi means? Okay, it's, it's like fancy, high class, it's French, you know, it had a certain je ne sais quoi. Well, how many of you can spell that word? And if you can't spell it, could you read it? No. Nope. And if you can't spell it, read it, or write it, do you understand it? No. no. So, A, the anchor was like, I don't know what that word is. B, the people watching probably didn't know either, because again, we're going after who? Dumb people. So easily understandable words. Short, simple sentences with easy, understandable words. Because the viewer only has one chance to hear the content. If you're doing television news, more than likely, you got one shot. Okay? So if I talk about automatopoeia, je ne sais quoi, and chlorophyll, you're like, what? You're not going to watch anymore because you feel dumb. And our job is to keep dumb people on the channel longer. So we get better ratings. So we get better revenue. You see how all this works? Smart people get it too. Like a smart person doesn't have a lot of time to think about it, so they're just going to keep watching and go, okay, cool, I got it. So dumb people equal ratings, equal revenue, equal jobs, equal happy, okay? <laughs> so how we are going to create your news packages. Your topic is school. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> school is disgusting, right? Watch it now. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do this as a collective, and it's going to be more than these five people who participate. Only one person is not going to participate. One and a half right home. Huh? <laughs> so we got five and a half right home. Huh? I feel like an auctioneer right now. That one's not going to participate. That's fine. Yeah. So <clears throat> school. Now, I didn't say which school. I didn't say what school. I didn't say what about school. I just said school. When you're brainstorming, how many bad ideas are there? None. None. Not one. <laughs> Not one. Because if you said there's thousands, then nothing would ever get created. So give me ideas about a news story about school. Like teachers. Hang on. I got a question. Okay. So we're putting our ideas out here, but what if somebody takes I don't care. Ideas? You don't own it? Make a better story. You're not in competing news. Josh, make a better story. Okay, lunch. Lunch, okay. Lunch is... Teachers and student interactions. <clears throat> student car having Drugs. sex in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, we're just going to say interactions. Can we keep it PG? <laughs> yes, please keep it PG. Remember, I don't go to meetings unless there's donuts. And those kind of meetings don't have donuts. So lunch, interactions, <laughs> students and teachers, what else? Grades. Grades. Michelle Obama. Yes. That goes with lunch. Actually, that doesn't because Obama, Obama cares. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. School buses, transportation works. And I'm going to poorly spell it. Sports. No, after school curricular. Uh, actually, curricular. Yeah. Clubs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What else? Cl that's extracurricular clubs. Drama. Discipline. Okay, U five. The U twenty. Bath or cleanliness. Okay. Okay, that doesn't. You five. You're 20. Dropouts. Okay. Dropouts. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I took your idea. What else? Peer pressure. She is gone. <laughs> Sleep. 
Scholarships. No. What else? No, anything else? College. What? Okay. I will go put the crime under discipline. Can we do homework? Homework. You can do whatever. I'm just taking ideas so that those people who go, Mr. White, I can't come up with an idea. I can go remember that brainstorming we did. You didn't just say what? Fights, discipline. Clicks, Clicks discipline, drama, grades, student. Uh, it's all clicks. Mm. That's pretty much it. Bullying, dropouts, yeah, clicks. Okay, so <clears throat> with these ideas. Mm. What about, you know how some teachers have a problem at the sexual orientation? Teacher, student interactions. Right, cool. Okay, so <clears throat> with these ideas, you can probably come up with 60 to 90 seconds of a story, right? That's all you got to make. Yeah, that's all you got to make. Oh, yeah, this 60 to 90 second story. Oh, that's not bad. It's not bad, right? That's so let's get... That's why I'm saying I'm going to be mad for like three days. All right, so we have now brainstorm ideas, but are all these good ideas? Uh, wait, wait, yes and no. Yes and no. But how, what makes it a good idea? If you can make a real story out of it. If you can make a real story, I could make a real story out of the grass being green outside my room. All right, what is interesting? I want to be interested. Okay. Interesting. So let's talk about things, how we determine if things are newsworthy. What makes things news? And not news, not information. She's sleeping back there, not news. She's sick, she's time changed, she's grumpy, she's got all that. We're going to let her do that. But that's not news, that's information. What is news? What, how do we determine newsworthiness? What would catch the dumb Okay, dumb, dumb people. What would catch their attention? Affects you. The weather affects you. Okay. So I like to say that there's two cons that always make for great news. Con, short for convict. Negative things. Okay. So two cons. Okay. You, you like these guys. Conflict and controversy. Because without those things, it's information. There is no conflict or controversy about my grass being green. What's the difference? Conflict is fighting. Controversy is more philosophical. It's more idea. It's that kind of stuff. Like Politics would be controversy, though when it turns to war, it becomes conflict. Gotcha. Got you? Okay. So the two main cons who make great news are conflict and controversy. So let's talk about one of your, uh, let's talk about transport. Now let's go classes. We're not going to talk about Michelle Obama. I'll let y'all build that one out because that's the one I've seen the most of. So, <laughs> classes. What's a conflict about classes potentially? Too Grades. Too long. Too many students. Too many students. What else? Teachers don't teach. Teachers don't teach. Teachers it's cold. Well, you, you got a big boy at the front. Rock, <laughs> I'm sweating. I said teachers can't teach. Teachers can't teach. Boring. Okay. Boring. Students can't learn. Boring. 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 They got one of the... Too much work. Ooh, getting close to home now. Yes. Not enough real world experience. experience. Okay, real okay. world applications and experience. Okay, so you've got those conflicts and controversies just in that one, that quick. Boom, 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 boom. Easy topic, right? Pretty much. So <clears throat> let's talk about some other things. Number one, timing. The grass turning green. When does that happen? Every other Every year. So is that a big deal? No, especially not about August when the grass has been green for about four or five months. True. So the word timing, the word news means exactly that. Things that are new. Okay. Now there are things that we get new information about. Like they found something about the Titanic or whatever. And that's news because that's new information. So timing is important. The average, only average interest needs to be told quickly. Okay. You know, you've seen those things where they build it up, all the newscast. Oh. Coming up in just a minute, 17 people burst into flames. But first, <laughs> yeah. crackers. You know, it's like, okay. So you're trying to get me through the crackers to get to the 17 people burst in flames. Yeah. So you build your story based on the interest. So your stuff that you're going to have to do because it's 60 to 90 seconds, I'll get to you in a minute, has to be very interesting. And I've built a grid that you guys will use to, to kind of make sure that happens. Yes. Uh, is that like the same thing they do with like award shows and stuff? Like they save the best for last? Oh, absolutely. So you'll watch. Yeah, because if you watch longer, 
the ratings go up. <clears throat> the other thing is significance. If seven people burst into flames or 700 people burst into flames, which one's more significant? 700. 700. Um, I used the example earlier that if I break my arm, the only people in my, the people that really care are really kind of my kids and wife. Like it affects you guys just because you'll hear me complain about how much my arm hurts. Mm -hmm. And like I would have to write on the board left handed, which you could only imagine what that would be. So, well, well, I appreciate that. But significance is about how important it is. Think of significance as importance. Proximity. If the video production teacher in Sheboygan, Wisconsin breaks his arm, do you care? No. no. I hope, they do, hope they're okay. <laughs> and I hope he can write with both hands. So, but proximity is, is, is important because it, it matters to you. And that's why I chose school as the overlying topic because A, it affects all of you. B, it's everywhere. Okay, so you can pull reference from different things. So, um, proximity is real important because the less interesting the story, the closer in proximity. Have you ever noticed how when somebody does something here at RCA, it never gets in the Atlanta Journal Constitution, <laughs> but it's in the Rockdale News and Rockdale Citizen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Proximity. So, same, same concept. Prominence. Okay. So, I fall and break my arm. Dozens of people care. Kim Kardashian burps in a Burger King, and it's on TMZ for millions of people to see, right? She's more popular than I am, sadly. Say I've probably got more talent right here. But famous people get more coverage because they're famous. Despite however they got there, that's what prominence means. Now, for you guys, for your topic, lunch is an easy go-to because it affects how many people? Everybody. All of you. Now, for me, the lunch is great because, I mean, I've had really bad lunches and you should have had them when I was a kid, but it affects everybody. So it is a popular topic. That makes sense? Yeah. Now, AP classes is pretty specific to those people. Very. All right. Somebody this morning was a, it said that the ROTC program somewhere needed new swords. And I was like, nobody cares. No. So, <clears throat> you know, it was just not a big thing. Now, human interest. There are human interest stories, and they're usually cuddly or sad and those things. But in my opinion, every news story has to have an element of, of human interest, or else it's not interesting. Because last time I checked, we're all what? Human. human. So you need to be something that people care about, like um, kids getting left on the bus because they walk really slow to the buses at the end of the day and getting left. Well, that's a human interest story because that impacts the student, their parents, the teachers, the school, the bus driver, all that stuff. Question. Yes. How can a dog die make news? How can a dog die and make news? Yeah. Depends on the dog. Or a llama shot. I feel like shot. it's just like an average dog. I mean, there were llamas running the streets of New Mexico last week that was all the rage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The five W's and an H. Determine and prepare, I should have put on there, your news story. Who knows the five W's? Who? Okay, who, what, when, where, why, and what's the H? How. How. Cool, so I can skip all those slides where I reveal those slowly. So who, what, when, where, why, and how? I'll show you in a little bit how if you do this, almost 25% of your script is written. Just like that. You like that? Yep. So we're going to talk about today's class as a news story because today's class is very important to who? You guys. So... First thing, who? Mr. White and his AVTF class. Easy, right? That's who's impacted by this lesson today. What? Learning what goes into writing a news package. When? Today. So it happened today, so it is? Current. Current, thank you. Breaking news, Mr. White taught today. Where did it happen? So let's talk about proximity. Where's our Rockdale Career Academy? We're actually in it. I mean, you don't get much closer to the news than that. Why? Because the students, and I typed poorly, oh, skipped one, don't know how yet and how a multimedia demo laced with sarcasm and wit. <laughs> so let's look at this. I'm just going to read the words, add a couple of adjectives and pronouns and stuff, and write the first 20 seconds of my script. Mr. White and his AVTF class are learning what goes into creating a news package today. They're at the Rockdale Career Academy learning this because the students don't know how yet. 
Mr. White used a multimedia demo laced with sarcasm and wit to deliver the message. 20 seconds, done. Who, what, when, where, how, and why? That was cute. You like that? I only practiced that like 17 times now. <laughs> so what you're going to do today, and we're going to walk through it. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. Then we're going to walk actually through one of them. You're going to come up with five topics. And I know most of you already have your number one topic in your head, and it's going to be the best thing ever, and you got it. But humor me and do five, and I'll show you why later. You're going to fill out a form that's in your drive to determine the topic you're going to cover. Pretty simple. We'll, go, we'll actually go over the form in just a moment. <clears throat> you're going to research. Now, I haven't talked a lot about research because we haven't researched a lot yet, but now we're getting ready for the news. Now, what do you think the biggest, easiest tool to use to research is? Yeah. Google. Starts with Google and ends with Google. So, <laughs> but, but most people don't know how to use Google. They don't know how to use Google. When you go to Google and you say, man, I really wish I knew how the Hurtigurter worked. Well, type in, how does a Hurtigurter work? I don't know what a Hurtigurter is. <laughs> how does it work? You literally type in, how does a Hurtigurter work? And Google will give you a website that says how a herder girder works. But most people would go, now what's a herder girder? Oh, it's a flip flam. So there we go. I need a flim flam. Well, then they get all this sales stuff. Ask Google a question. I don't know, like, I'm trying to remember back when I was in school, like, how I lived without Google, because I don't remember. I mean, I know it meant the library, encyclopedias, and Dewey Decimal System, and all that. And, yeah, so I mean, how did we do it before Google? I don't remember. So use the internet to find out. Now, if you're doing, someone uh, in one of my earlier classes was doing, why can't students in Rockdale County Public Schools tap into the school's Wi-Fi system? <laughs> so she typed in, why can't, it, what's wrong with that? It's too, it's too, long. Long. It's too, it's too specific. Yeah. Like it, she's looking for like the exact answer because they said so. So, but, but if you say student, or where can students use free Wi-Fi? Or do students use school Wi-Fi? You'll find all kinds of stuff. Now, another obstacle she ran into is it didn't just go, hey, here's your answer. Yeah, exactly. It made her use her brain a little bit. Because what it did was it said BYOD, which means bring your own device. Okay? She didn't understand that. When you get those things that you don't really stop and read. How many times I say that? If you start at the top left-hand corner and read all the way in order to the bottom right-hand corner, you'll get all the information. So when you're doing this research, stop and read. And let's go over here to fill out the form now. Yes. Yes. Okay. I was like, wow, that's a random question. Okay. So in your drive is this document. And this document will help you far beyond anything I could teach you standing up here, because this document actually is going to make you think a little bit. I know, thinking, overrated, right? <laughs> so let's come up with five topics. Lunch. 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 Definitely lunch. Bullying. Um, Peer pressure. Sports. Okay, I got them. <laughs> don't, you, don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fall and break my arm and have to do it left-handed. You keep it up. Um, peer pressure. <laughs> Everybody's got jokes. So, okay, we got lunch, bullying, grapes, sports, and peer pressure. Actually, at some point in the near future, you should Google what happens if you microwave a grape. <laughs> so, this grid will help you determine your topic and if it's newsworthy. So... I'm not going to go through all of this, but lunch impacts who? Us. Uh, students. 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 And Everybody. Not Everybody. Teachers. Everybody. Teachers. Everybody. Everyone. Students. Everyone. The whole school, the school? system. <laughs> okay, school system. Because I guarantee you most, I mean, especially if you're in a school, you eat in the cafeteria. Oh, yeah. So what? What's, what's the deal? It's nasty. It's, it's nasty. It doesn't, it doesn't fill you up. <laughs> okay. All those ideas. Now, on your, on your form, you would put all of your information there. I'm just putting a couple of words. When? When does it impact you? When does it? Every day. So, daily. Where does it impact you? School. Why does it impact you? Hungry. Hungry. How, does this, how is this news? 
Because yeah, everybody yeah, showing how it's just school is to everybody and their children. Okay, affects everyone. I love how the school is now responsible for feeding their children. <laughs> Think about what you said. So now I'm not going to go through. They're not responsible for it. So I'm not going to fill the rest of these out. But let's say bullying. We know we put something in here for who, what, when, why, and how. Hang on a minute. I'll get to you. And then for grapes, we put who, what. And then for sports, we answered all of them. And then for peer pressure, we answered this many and left those open. Which of these would you probably go for? Okay, so you could eliminate these, right? So now you've cut your job 60% because you now know that these probably aren't that newsworthy or you're not ready for them to be newsworthy or you're not thinking about them in a way that's newsworthy. So now we have to think about the two cons when they are? Conflict and controversy. Conflict and controversy. So what's conflict for sports or for lunch? Can we find conflict? No. Yes. Yes. What is it? It don't it doesn't well with your stomach. Okay. <laughs> Not fights. That has nothing to do with food. Okay. So we have one of the cons for lunch. Do we have can we come up with one for sports? No. Yes. Yeah. Time consuming. Time consuming. What else? It hurts people. Okay, it hurts people. So we have conflict and for both of those. Controversy. Yes. For uh, lunch. Yeah. Uh, oh, nutrition. Oh, oh your religion feet. might prohibit what, Okay. What so you have. can go into all that. Can you really find something else for sports? Controversy? No. Not controversy. Not, a, not a, or you could, but not on that vague level. So we're going to say no. So which of these should you go with? The lunch. The lunch. So now, what you're going to do <laughs> this morning, when I did this little move here, I didn't erase the board. So when I came back, it looked like this. <laughs> and I was like, who filled it out that quick? <laughs> so now we know that we're going to talk about lunch which seems to be the number one topic. So if you don't want to steal someone else's ideas or have them steal yours, don't do lunch. So <laughs> lunch. This is where you get into some detail because what you're going to do next class is come up to me and tell me why this story should be produced. Just like you would have to do if you were trying to get your story on the air somewhere else, okay? Okay. So you will fill out all of this nasty, what do they do, 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 boom, 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 all of that. You will fill it all out. So what is the subject of the story? Nasty. Food. <laughs> what do they do or what happened? What happened to cause the nasty food? They don't cook it up. Okay, so I'm just going to put list of things. <laughs> yeah. Michelle Obama, I love, that, I love that everyone thinks it's her. I'm like, well, she really doesn't do anything do except say, you know, no, it's not the principal. It's, it's at the federal level. When did it happen? Uh, last, no, beginning of school year. Thank you. August 14 is, that's 2014, not the day. Where did it happen? At, uh, at your school. Everywhere. Everywhere meaning? Schools. Which schools? America. <laughs> Thank you. Because believe it or not, Michelle Obama's influence is much larger than Rockdale County and Georgia. So we're going to say U.S. schools. This would be a great place to put a big graphic. Okay, quit being dumb. Why did it happen? So health concerns. Because <laughs> <laughs> Virginia was the better state. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. How did it happen? She made a law. She got her. All right. About you five. Oh. How did it happen? Just again. Yeah, we got fat kids. We got fat kids. What else? Oh, and fat mamas and daddies. And what else? <laughs> How did the actual food in the schools change? Oh, their whole week. <laughs> They had a meeting. There weren't donuts there. I can assure you that. <laughs> what happened in that meeting? So, <laughs> so <laughs> I was going to say, from the way Javiah is talking about it, they hate the children. <laughs> so, when you come up to me next class, you're going to come up to me and I'm going to pull up your document. We're going to talk about it. And I'm going to ask you things like, is this timely? Is this topic timely? Yes. Like, is it current? Is it? Yeah. No. 
<laughs> conflict. Is there a conflict or controversy? Yes. yes. What about proximity? Is it around us? Yes. Is it interesting to humans? Yes. 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 Is there relevance? Yes. Now, I can assure you that your meeting with me next week for your pitch, or next class for your pitch, is not going to be that easy. You're not going to be, I'm not going to go, yeah, I believe it's relevant. And I'm going to punch holes in it. I'm going to make you work for your topic. So here's my suggestion. You work really hard right in here. So that when I say, well, why is it relevant to me? You could say, well, because da 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 Well, where'd you find that? Well, right here. How'd you find that? I went to Google, and I researched, and it was on the such and such website. Do your due diligence on the research. Don't come half-stepping. Because what's going to happen is, next class, we're going to go through and do these, and we're going to start writing the scripts. But you can't write your script until you get my approval on the topic. Because I want to make sure you know exactly what your topic is. I'm going to ask you things like, who cares? I'm going to ask you why they care. I'm going to ask you, what's, what's the point of your story? And if you say, food's bad, <laughs> you're not getting my approval. I want to know exact, okay? This document is in your drive. Are there any questions? What is it called? It's... Uh, it's the one with your name on it, and it's something, uh, let's say, news package proposal form. Okay? okay? Any questions? No. Yeah, I don't think so. Go make awesome. Don't